So how do we know when it's time to come see you? Well, I think if these symptoms resonate with you and, you're in, and you have changes in your activities of daily living, your calves hurt, so you put your legs up and it interrupts your dinner. It disrupts your work patterns. It makes it so you're not exercising because your legs are gassed at the end of your work day. I had a school teacher tell me exactly that. She'd get home from her school day and her feet needed to go up because her legs were so exhausted. Well, she can't exercise. They, if they're affecting your activities of daily living, then it's a very reasonable uh, consultation. The other thing is, People can have some scary things happen with veins. They can spontaneously bleed. An innocuous little shaving cut won't quit and so forth. The main first aid if that happens to you is to elevate and to put focal, focal compression down. These veins can clot so people can go along kind of nursing their ropey veins which are pooling blood but that blood is stagnant and it's prone to clotting so something that is just kind of pooling and they think it's just kind of a bother that they work around suddenly becomes a really uncomfortable event that lasts for several weeks where they've where they've basically had a traffic jam in the veins and the vein venous blood has congealed there and caused clotting. This isn't dangerous in the way that a deep circuit clot is but it's certainly something that I see when people have finally have long-term vein issues come to their attention. But I think, I, I think skin integrity issues, so uh, changes in the skin, your ankles are starting to be swollen and brown. You have a wound that won't heal lower. Now a lot of doctors are aware of the, the, um, of the influences of venous insufficiency, which is what we're talking about, the bad valves, of pooling venous blood on limiting wound care. But not everyone is, and pa patients will sometimes nurse wounds for long periods and they're not, they're not healing well and it's not an arterial as in oxygen or glucose delivery problem, it's a venous insufficiency problem because those exhausts that we talked about, carbon dioxide, lactate, and urea, are just congesting in that tissue that's trying to heal with building blocks. So when we come see you, what are some of the treatment options available? So when you come and see me, I need to be cautious about attributing your symptoms to any vein problem. So the first thing I need to do is bring my experience to bear. Really listen to your symptoms and try to discern whether it would make sense that this is a venous problem. Then, if I believe that there's some reasonable um, risk of that, the most important pivotal test is actually an ultrasound exam. And it's not just your generic ultrasound that shows that you don't have a deep clot. It's actually a study, and I think it ought to be done by somebody who's pretty versed in, in venous ultrasound studies, which determines the function of the valves in terms of their competence. It also speaks to the anatomy of the veins. Who's pooling? Who's talking back to who? Whom? Where are they going? It also t speaks to the adequacy of your deep system. Is it open? Is it competent? Does it have any influence on your symptoms? So those are the three main portions of a good ultrasound exam. Now, with those two pieces in mind, a careful history, a good physical exam by your doctor, and then a competent and, and thorough venous insufficiency study with ultrasound, now I'm able to speak to the likelihood of your veins being an issue for the symptoms that you bring.